What is up, guys, and welcome to the Strength of Body and Mind podcast. My name is Gordon. I'm going to be your host, and this is episode 84. And today, I'm just going to jump right in. Today, we're going to be talking about pain tolerance. This is one of my favorite subjects to talk about. It comes up all the time. And the reason it comes up all the time is because, honestly, like if I were to sum it up in just a a quick like one or two liner, the people who are successful in fitness and successful in really creating the, uh, the, the health that they want, first and foremost, the energy levels that they want, the natural energy levels that they want, and the body that they want aesthetically, strength wise, size wise, definition, all of it. The people who create that for themselves have the highest pain tolerance. Okay. They do. And what I mean by that is because it's not just physical pain. That's not 100% what I'm talking about. That is relevant here. And I'll, I'll get into that, but pain tolerance is so much deeper than that. And really what I'm talking about is mental pain. I'm talking about how much can you endure over and over and over again? How much, how much failure can you endure and how much slow progress can you endure and how many plateaus can you endure before you give up? See, the reason people fail in fitness is not because they don't know how to lift weights or they don't know how to go to the gym and do some kind of high intensity workout. They know how to do pushups. They know how to do cardio. You know, we learn all those things when we're growing up and we're told by people who are both in shape and out of shape as we're growing up exactly how to do it. (laughs) And we're, you know, we go, we do, we have gym class at school. We play sports as kids and sometimes even as adults, you join a, a beer league or a men's league or a, a woman's league, something or a co-ed league of something, whatever. And so we learn the the tactical stuff, like the real elementary basics on how to stay fit, be active, all those things, right? And then similarly, we tip and for the most part, people, again, like just real generally know things that they should and shouldn't be eating. Now, it's much more complicated than that when you really start getting into the weeds, like how to eat strategically to put on muscle, how to eat strategically to burn fat, how to eat strategically to to develop um, a certain type of aesthetic, right? All those things are very different. And you won't know those naturally. You won't just intuitively know how to do those things or how to eat for those specific goals. That's where someone who's been there, done that, would be able to to develop that programming for you. But what you do know is what you, at a high, high, high level, 30,000 foot view, you know what you should and shouldn't eat. You know what you should and shouldn't be doing regarding activity in your free time. Should I sit on the couch or should I go for a two mile walk? Should I, I don't know, should I uh, go lay out? in my backyard by the pool and eat an entire bag of Doritos and drink three Bud Lights? Or should I jump in the pool and swim laps for 20 minutes, right? Those are very different ways of doing, uh, of, of spending time doing something, right? Passing time. So we, we all know those things. That's my point. Everyone kind of understands that. That's really basic, very obvious for most people. But What's not obvious for most people is the reason why people can't do that. People, the reason why people can't make the better of those two decisions. And so the, the thing that I'm obsessed with, honestly, is the human behavior behind why people make these decisions. Because most of the time, honestly, it's, it's like it's, it's just a form of laziness. And it's, it's wrapped up and packaged and delivered in a way where they rationalize that by coming up with something else. That is almost always what people who are unsuccessful in fitness and health and all of their goals, when they're unsuccessful that, this is what they do. They rationalize it with something that masks, well, they try to mask, uh, laziness. 
and lack of effort. And most importantly, their lack of ability to endure pain. Because think about right now how many people in your circle are extremely fit or have reached a level of health and fitness that they've always wanted or an aesthetic objective that they've always wanted, like a six pack or like, you know, really a really shredded body or, or maybe even not shredded. Maybe this, they just lost a ton of weight and they got themselves into great shape, amazing shape and they're strong and they're fit and they can, they're flexible and, and they have a broad range of motion that they didn't have before they started. How many people in your circle have those things already have developed those things. The answer is very, very few, very, very few people. If you are in a situation where the majority of the people around you are fit and have achieved all those goals that they wanted, then they, you probably are in that same, that same boat. You probably have that result already achieved at least to some extent because you have all those positive influences around you. But for most people listening to this, and just most people in general, you don't have a lot of positive influences around you. And the reason is because those people don't know how to endure pain either. So they too know how to eat in general and really like what not to eat. What's, what's the better of the two choices. They also know typically how they should be spending their free time, not every second, but in little, in little batches of time that that we have throughout the day, they, most people in your life know that at least one of those little slivers of time that I have, I should spend it being active versus sitting around because that will promote better health in my own body. That will ward off at least to some extent, chronic disease that will keep the weight down. That'll keep the body fat down, you know, just basic activity. So most people know that. Right, But the reason that most people around you, including yourself, haven't achieved the thing that you want is because you haven't built up that pain tolerance enough. And what that pain tolerance really allows you to do is to do more of the things that are going to get you closer to that goal because that's really what it takes. I actually just posted a, something on Instagram uh, today about this because it's been on my mind a lot lately and I've been talking to a lot of people lately and I'm finding really, uh, it's always been there, but right now in particular, at this moment, January, 2019, I'm finding that so many people, because they're talking about fitness more this time of year, so many people really struggle with this one thing, which is let me look at the one or two things in my life that if I just focused on those every single day, a little bit and stop trying to do all the other stuff, just focused on those one or two very, very simple things. And I mastered those one or two things that that would create a huge impact in my life in terms of my health and fitness. Okay. So one example is, uh, drinking calories. Okay. This comes up all the time. I talk about it a lot too. A lot of people drink their calories. They drink five, six, 700 calories a day and, and Liquid drinks, drinks, like when you drink calories, what you're drinking almost always is carbs. I don't count a protein shake as a drink, by the way, like a scoop of protein mixed with water. That's not a drink. You don't, you don't drink those as a drink. Like a drink is usually something you have with a meal kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's not a, a protein shake is kind of like a mini meal in itself. So that's not really what I'm talking about. But people who drink their calories, like they put a lot of sugar in their coffee, a lot of cream in their coffee, Uh, they drink soda, regular soda with a lot of sugar in it, or they have a lot of beer, a lot of wine, you know, they have a wine, a couple glasses of wine every night, a couple beers every night. And I know how that sounds like, you know, just take it easy, Gordon. It's just a couple of beers, bro, or take it easy. It's just a couple glasses of wine, right? But listen, yeah, I know it's only a couple beers. It's only a couple glasses of wine, but guess what? Each one of those is 120, 150, 170 calories. You have those two things at night. That in itself, no, not the end of the world. But let's just say that's 300 or 350 calories right there. You have one or two cups of coffee that you put a couple tablespoons of sugar in or some cream or both, right? There's another couple hundred calories. 
So now you're already up to like four or 500 calories just right there. If you have one soda, that's going to push you over to closer to 600 calories. Um, if you have like a glass of orange juice, it seems harmless. Yeah, it's just juice, right? It's just juice. But there's so much sugar in that. And there's so many calories in orange juice. There's so many calories in cranberry juice and apple juice and all those things that before you know it, you've got six, seven. I mean, you could even be pushing if you visit Starbucks and get like those lattes or something like you could really hit a thousand calories in one day just in the form of drinks. Now, why is this important? Because if you focus on just that one thing, even if you didn't go to the gym, even if you didn't structure your meals any differently than you do now, and all you did, like if you're one of these people that drinks a lot of calories, if all you did was replace all of those with calorie free drinks, just that one move, meaning, you know, you could still have coffee, but have it with a Splenda instead of sugar. Or if you're anti artificial sweetener, then use Truvia or use uh, Stevia or use monk fruit or one of those natural sweeteners. That's not sugar. That's also calorie free. Um, or in some cases, I think some of those natural sweeteners have like 10 calories in a serving versus a tablespoon of sugar, which has like 40 or 50 or something. Uh, so anyway, if you just did that with your coffee and then you replace that soda with either a diet soda, also not great, but it's calorie free. Okay. Um, or water or, um, I don't know, iced tea, unsweetened iced tea, something like that. Or one of those calorie free seltzer waters, which is like, you know, there's like four ingredients in those, uh, something like that. And then you replaced your wine and beer at night with just water. Like you, you know, don't, or don't have so much or only have one beer like every other night or every three nights or once a week, right? If you just reduced all of that down, okay. Reduced all of that down. And I've seen this happen, guys. You could easily lose 20, 30 pounds over the course of a year, just not drinking your calories. Think about that. If you just made those, those very simple changes and that's, that's called mastery of the small things, mastery of the small stuff. And then another example would be if you just took one, um, like one sliver of time, five days a week and got 30 minutes of movement in there. And 30 minutes is usually enough time for someone to walk a mile and a half to two miles. Um, you know, and if you start combining that with like parking a little further away, when you go places, if you just did that little thing right there, it's just a little things like just try to get 30 minutes of movement five days a week and you stop drinking your calories, you would make massive impact. And guess what? You didn't need to restructure your whole life to do that. That's called focusing on the small things and mastering the small things. Okay. And that, that doesn't require a tremendous amount of pain tolerance, but what that leads to, what that allows you to do is that opens up the door to doing more that opens up the door to accelerating things. Because here's the thing that happens when you start by stop drinking your calories and you start by moving for a very small period of time, five days a week, right? That's, that's, that's like just, you know, barely hitting the tip of the iceberg. And then what happens is you slowly start to integrate more and all of a sudden two of those days, instead of just going out and walking for two miles, you're now going to the gym for an hour and now you're lifting weights and now you're doing resistance training. And now you are, you're hitting a spin class or something and you're doing all this, these other things. And then you slowly start to integrate more and more and more. And then the natural progression from there is usually to, well, let me restructure my meals a little bit. Maybe I'm not eating the right stuff. And then you start to research that and you start to get into that and you start to change the way you eat. Oh, maybe I should eat more protein. Maybe I should eat less fat, you know, not tremendously less, but maybe I should eat less fat. Maybe I should eat less carbs. You know what? A lot of my meals are just like super carb heavy with no protein. Let's, let's, let's kind of adjust the, the ratios here a little bit. You start to be more conscious of it. Right. And then what happens is you start to make more progress. You start to make more progress. This is a very natural, very common thing for people to experience when they start going down this path. But then comes the pain part, right? This is the part 
where most people fail because they've done all these new things. And when you're doing all these new things, it's fun. It's a novelty. Everything seems cool. It seems new. It seems interesting and exciting. But then what happens when it gets stale and it gets boring and it gets repetitive? That's when the pain begins because that's when you need to endure this thing that doesn't really bring you as much excitement as it used to. Yeah, you're still losing weight, but you've still got 60 pounds to go. You've still got 40 pounds to go. You're still not down to 11% body fat or whatever it is that you want. So you can't see your abs yet. You can't see all the vascularity yet. You can't see your hips yet. If you're, if you're looking for shoulder definition or leg definition or, um, you know, whatever, whatever your goal is, you know, you're still not there yet. Then, you know, you need to continue doing what you're doing, but it gets harder. And as it gets harder, you start getting distracted by what this person's doing over here, which is different from you. And they happen to have the body that you want, or they have characteristics on their body or something going on in their health that they have, that, that they have already achieved that you want. So you start getting distracted from what you're doing and you start trying to adopt things they're doing and it doesn't work after two weeks. And so you get distracted by this other person that you happen to see on Instagram or on YouTube who's got results that you want also, but they're doing something that's even different from this other person. So now you try to adopt things from there. And then before you know it, you're actually like, you're not really following a program anymore. You're not really following the routine that got you results. Instead, you're like, you're piecemealing things together that don't really work. And you're, they all might work independently of each other when you're in a vacuum, like you could follow that person's program, but if he followed it to a T, you'd get this result. And this other person, you could follow their programming and you could follow that diligently and get some result. But when you start mixing and matching, then you don't, you're not following a program at all. You're just, you're kind of just screwing around. You're just messing around. You're just doing, you're just exercising at that point. <laughs> you're just exercising. You're no longer training. You're no longer what I would call working out. You're just doing stuff. And that's the fastest way to failure because you being unable to endure the pain of consistency and repetition has caused you to seek out excitement from something else and changing things up and make and, and being a little bit more of that, bringing more of that novelty factor back in. This is all stemming from your inability to endure the pain of the mental pain of consistency, the mental pain of repeating the thing that you have been doing over and over and over and over again. And all of a sudden you're going to get less results than you were getting, but now you're mentally excited again and you're mentally um, like distracted in a way. And what you're going to find is after two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks is that these new things that you try to bring in, they're actually leading to you getting less results, fewer results. And that's going to make you become dissatisfied. That's going to make you become bummed out. You're going to get pissed off. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to be disappointed. And as that continues to build and compound, you're going to end up in this place where you're confused. You don't know where you started really like you kind of remember it, but you don't really remember it. And you don't really know what happened to cause, to cause yourself to become derailed. And now this is the point. And this is usually between three and six months, guys. Um, this is the point when people fall off. They start cheating on their diet more. They start going back into those old habits they had because, oh, hey, I've lost 35 pounds. I deserve, right? I deserve to go drink this case of beer. I deserve to go drink a couple glasses of wine. I deserve to go get a large co like a large um, latte from Starbucks or something with like a million grams of sugar and all this cream, heavy cream and stuff. I deserve all this stuff, right? I deserve, I deserve, I deserve. That's always the rationale I, he I hear. I work so hard, I deserve this. I work so hard, I deserve this. Guess what? That's unhealthy, by the way. That, that frame of thinking is unhealthy. You sh once you get to that point where you feel like you've worked so hard that you now deserve something, then you are in a place that is incredibly unhealthy and is going to lead to binging. That's like the first step, the first phase of binging and putting all the weight back on. 
is when you start to get into that mentality. So when I work with people, I try to get them into this mode of understanding where there is a, there is a grind phase in the beginning. Okay. The grind phase is difficult, but the, the grind phase is designed to shock. And once you get through the grind phase, which brings a tremendous amount of results, by the way, then you start to build up optimization. When you build up optimization, then you can start to intuitively eat and intuitively consume food where you are not, you are not earning your, your way into eating certain foods. You're not earning it. You're not working so hard and then positioning yourself so that you have now earned a slice of pizza. No, instead you build a lifestyle where you can integrate those things into your life so that it's just part of your life daily, weekly, and you're not earning it. You can just make it part of your life naturally, right? But in order to get there, you need to optimize your body and optimize your, your training and optimize your RMR, your resting metabolic rate, and get yourself into a place where you can do that. But guess what that takes, guys? Guess what that takes? That takes the ability to endure pain, okay? That takes the, uh, that requires, that's the better word for it, that requires the, the ability, the tolerance of dealing with pain, dealing with consistency, dealing with repetition, dealing with enduring the same thing that you have been doing for a while over and over and over and over and over again until you get there. It's really simple. A plus B plus C gets you the result. Okay. But what's not easy about it, even though it's simple, what's not easy about it is take is enduring the pain is taking blow after blow after blow. And what that might look like is even though you've lost 45 pounds, like you could go to weigh yourself and you'd be up three pounds. And then the next day you'll be up four pounds. And the day after that, you'll still be up three pounds. And then the day after that, you'll only be up one pound. And then you'll go back to your weight. And then three days later, you might be up a pound again. And it has nothing to do with anything you're doing wrong. That's just part of the process. And when situations like that happen, that's when people fail. That's when they jump off the the train completely because they think that they're doing something wrong. They don't trust the process. They're not patient. They're not willing to accept these little things that look like micro failures when really that's just the way the body primes itself for weight loss. That's the way the body balances itself out, recalibrates. Remember, the body is a dynamic, wildly complex organism, and it's not something that you can predict down to the day of how it's going to behave. And everything under the sun can influence it. So, you know, it's 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 just something that it, it confuses people so much to the point where they see one number on a scale, which is just a measurement device, and all of a sudden they lose their mind they go off the rails, they realize they can't, they don't, they don't necessarily intuitively identify this, but this is what happens. They, they realize they can't handle the consistency over and over and over again. It feels like a jail cell. It feels like this weird mind game that they just can't deal with anymore. And they, they have this uncontrollable, ur- uncontrollable urge to go and change things up, even though the thing that they've been doing has been working for so long. And it all comes down to pain tolerance. How much pain can you deal with? How much pain can you endure? Because I promise you this, if you can endure the pain, the anguish, the the torture that it feels like sometimes of enduring repetition and enduring consistency, then you'll be successful. You will get the body that you want. You will get the level of health that you want. You will avoid the chronic disease that you're trying to avoid. You will avoid obesity. If you're already obese, you'll be able to lose it all. You won't need gastric bypass. You won't need any of that shit. But it comes down to pain tolerance, pain withstanding. That's it. Pain tolerance. So ask yourself, how much can you endure? That's it, guys. That's going to wrap it up. Thank you so much. I hope that you actually take a minute to really think about this because this is kind of like a secret thing, a secret weapon, if you will, that if you understand that pain tolerance is such a key component and you can master it, then you can literally create any body, any level of health, any level of strength, anything that you want. That's it. So if you got value out of this, guys, please head over to iTunes. Please leave me a rating and a review. Remember, this content is 100% free, so all ratings and all reviews, especially on iTunes, 
are extremely helpful. So thank you guys so much. As always, don't forget, train with purpose, and I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Take care.